Welcome to topic four of the massive online open course Designing the Energy Transition, Simulating Models Towards a Sustainable Society. Topic four is entitled Energy Infrastructures and Land Use in Medeas. And this session is dedicated to the first part of topic four, Materials, Transportation and ROI in Medeas. The contents of this video are related to the following modules of the Medeas model energy infrastructures, materials, and land use. In topic four, we talked about energy sources, fossil as well as renewable ones. We also said that in order to capture renewable energy, we need to build up infrastructures. The amount of renewable energy that we can extract at any moment is proportional to the infrastructures we have. When we talk about energy infrastructures, we mean such things as solar panels or windmills but in a wider sense, we all can also talk about the equipment we need to distribute the energy or about such things as electric vehicles and batteries that enable us to use the energy from renewable sources in transportation, for example. There is a limit to the amount of infrastructures that we may have since their building up requires time and investment. Materials might also impose a limit since the amount of minerals is limited and some technologies require minerals that are very rare. The building up of energy infrastructures also requires the use of energy. This is why we need to talk about the concept of ERI, energy return on energy investment. And finally, energy infrastructure require land. All of these aspects are going to be addressed in topic four. Topic four is divided in two sessions. Topic four one dedicated to mineral transportation and ERI, and session four two dedicated to land use. Session four point one starts with a review of some concepts of renewable energy extraction and distribution that were already seen in topic three. Then we continue by focusing on one of the most important sectors, transportation. The third section is about mineral requirements for the energy transition and the fourth is about energy requirements for the energy transition and the concept of energy return on energy investment. Let us start with the first section, energy extraction and distribution. In topic three, we talk about the renewable energy infrastructures in Medeas. We show that they are modeled using several stocks for the install plan and require production capacity of renewable energy. The main infrastructures considered are uh, renewable electricity generation for aid technologies, storage and distribution for electric renewable energies, gas to liquids and coal to liquids conversion plants and renewable energies for heat. Let us focus now our attention on one of the industrial sectors that is a vital factor in the energy transition, transportation. The demand of energy for transportation comes from different uses. On the one hand, we have the energy demanded for household private cars. And on the other, the demand from companies that transport goods and persons, which in Medeas is divided into inland transportation, air transportation, and water and other transportation. The energy vectors that move this transportation are mainly liquid fuels, which most times are derived from oil, only 2% is electricity and only 7% is gas. We know that oil is going to be the first fossil fuel to experiment shortages and liquid fuels are not easy to obtain from other sources. On the other hand, most of the renewable energy is electricity. It is therefore desirable to change the energy vector of transportation to electricity or eventually to gas. This can only be done if there is a change in the vehicles and gasoline and diesel vehicles are replaced by electric, hybrid and gas vehicles. This change can be done more or less easily for private cars and for inland transportation, but it is technically difficult to do for air and water transportation. Therefore, Medeas considers the change in the type of vehicle for private cars and for motorbikes and for trucks like cargo vehicles, buses and trains. While in the air and water transportation, only general improvements in the efficiency are considered. 
The Medeas transportation models works as follows. We consider the percentage of vehicles of each type. The rate of change of this stock is decided by the user and it changes linearly. For example, the initial percentage of cars using liquids today is almost 100%, while the percentage of electric and hybrid cars is negligible. We can decide the final percentage in the final year of the policy so that the percentage of alternative cars will grow and that of cars using liquid fuels will decrease. The Medeas model, at least in pres present version, does not consider social policies that change mentalities or enforce cultural changes, such as the massive promotion of public transportation or bicycles. Therefore, the total number of vehicles is determined by the economic demand and the growth of the population. The number of alternative vehicles, therefore, is determined by multiplying the total number of cars by the percentage of each alternative vehicle. This estimates the number of cars and enables us to determine the batteries needed and the necessary energy, which is calculated via the energy intensities of households and inland transportation sectors. In the Excel file inputs WLU, the user can decide if these vehicle substitution policies are activated or not and also decide the initial final year of the substitution and the desired percent of vehicles in the final year for household vehicles and for inland transportation vehicles. Let us take a look now at the third part of this session, mineral requirements. Minerals are present in the earth in crust in deposits of high concentration coal mines. These deposits are classified into resource and reserves. Reserves are those technically, economically, and legally feasible to extract. Resources are greater. They are those deposits that might eventually be extracted, but which at present are not profitable or legal. However, resources might become reserves when the price of the technology makes extraction viable. Human beings extract minerals to use them in different technologies. After use, some of those elements are recycled. Both extraction and recycling require energy. Normally, extraction requires more than recycling. The massive use of fossil fuel has enabled our society to extract many more minerals than those that were available in past centuries. However, most minerals are not recycled, and after use, they go to landfills, where they end up dispersing in soils or in the ocean. Theoretically, those minerals could be concentrated again and used, but According to the thermodynamic laws, this requires an enormous amount of energy. Therefore, once minerals are dispersed, recycling is not reasonable and they are lost forever to human technology. At present, most minerals are not recycled. In this figure, we can see the recycling rates of the most relevant elements of the periodic table. Only those in blue are recycled at rates higher than 50%. Many minerals used in electronics and in renewable energy are not recycled at all. For example, lithium, the lightest metal, which is very important for making light batteries for electrical vehicles, or gallium, indium, and tellurium, which are used to obtain high-performance photovoltaic panels, or neodymium, which is used in the permanent magnets of wind turbines. Medeas considers the availability of 58 materials of which 19 are minerals. They have been chosen because they are the bulk of the raw materials used in the construction of the six most critical technologies, which are uh, soft solar photovoltaic, concentrated solar power, onshore and offshore wind farms, batteries for electrical vehicles, and electrical grids. And also, Medeas calculates the demand of the rest of the economy. The policy that can be selected by the user is recycling, while the output information is warning that tell us when the reserves and the resources of a particular mineral are depleted. In the Excel files uh, uh, inputs and W, the initial and the final year of the policies and the recycling rates of each mineral can be selected. In order to have a sustainable technology, 
we should move from today's picture of very low recycling. Otherwise, the transition to renewable energies will deplete the reserves and even the resources of some key critical minerals. For example, a 100% society, renewable society in 260, excuse me, in 2060, with no recycling policies, will use 78 of the reserves of, co of copper, 135 of the reserves of lithium, and will need an amount of tellurium and indium several times bigger than the resources of those minerals. In fact, the reserves of 11 out of the 19 minerals that we have considered will be depleted. Some of those minerals could be substituted by others, but at the cost of losing their unique properties, which means we will end up with technologies with lower efficiency and more land demands. The last session of this presentation is about the ROI of the transition to a renewable society. The most common way to calculate ROI is in the static form. A static ROI is the result of dividing the energy output of an infrastructure over all its lifetime by the energy needed to build and operate it. In Medeas, we have calculated the static ROI of the most important renewable technologies based on their material requirements. The results are shown in this table. We can see that some of them, such as biofuels, have energy returns very close to one, which means that the energy they give is almost the same as the energy they require. While others, such as photovoltaic, solar, CSP, and um, we know, sure, have higher ratios. These ratios can be compared with the combined ROI of the entire economic system, which at, at present is higher for most technologies. However, Medeas does not only calculate the static ROI. The dynamic nature of a model enables us to take into account a very important aspect of the energy transition. As the stock of renewable infrastructure is set up, energy needs to inve need, invest, need invested in advance. For example, if we want to increase the renewable energy following the pattern of the right hand graph, we will need to invest energy in a pattern similar to the one of the left. The result of subtracting the energy invested from the energy obtained leads to the curve shown below, which in the first year gets negative, which means that renewable infrastructures becomes a net consumer of energy. This pattern is called the energy trap. Renewable energies become a sacrifice of present well-being for the sake of the future. In Medeas, dynamic ROI is calculated by dividing the output of energy obtained in one particular year from the whole system by the energy invested that year. If the introduction of renewable energies is very fast, we might find situations such as the one shown in this graph. Let us assume that the percentage of renewable energy in the electric means is increased to 50% or to 70% or to 100% from now to 2060. In these cases, the ROI of the whole system would decrease much faster for the 100% target than for the 70% or for the 50% target. The fast introduction of renewable energy is lowering the ROI to a low and dangerous level, forcing society to function with very low net energy. Some argue that the minimum ROI needed to maintain a complex society is around five or around 10, depending on the authors, although these data are subject to many uncertainties. This concludes session 4.1. The second part of topic four can be found in the video of session 4.2. Goodbye and thank you very much for your attention.